Welcome to this week's episode of Bounce of the Ball. Uh, this week we have a special guest on with us. We have Josh Barnett, host of the Westlife podcast. So, g'day, Josh. Thanks for having us. Glad, glad to, uh, yeah, be on a, another show and yeah, talk a bit of basketball because I know that whenever I uh, sneak a bit of basketball talk into our rugby league podcast, the list, some listeners get a little bit annoyed that we uh, get off the track. A little bit, but um, oh, eyes yeah, over a bit. There'll be no excuses here. Yeah, <laughs> too easy. <laughs> and also joined again by my co-host Brendan Bashara. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Good to be back. Um, yeah, just ready to dive into another week. Like like Josh said, always good to get a bit of NBA chat in. It's it's predominantly NRL these days, so yeah, excited. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's coming to the to the end of all things. NBA at the moment, so we may as well get what we can out of it. Uh, we're going to stretch it out with some predictions over the yep. next couple of weeks and that, but um, yeah, we're going to be getting mostly to the point end of the NRL season over the next couple of weeks, so yeah, we'll just see how we go with this. So just to recap, last week we did our Western Conference uh, conference prospect predictions, so just to be clear, that wasn't about who we thought were going to be uh, in the standings, but more of who was going to be a threat post-season. Um, I chose... Nuggets, the Lakers, the Warriors, and the Suns is my top four. And um, Brendan, you chose the Lakers, the Warriors, the Nuggets, and the Suns. Yeah, yeah so, um, Josh, you're a huge Nuggets fan. Yes. So, uh, what do you think I am. are the prospects for your Nuggets this year? I gave them a lot of love week last week. I thought they are the fire team postseason, especially Jamal Murray. Um watching him in the bubble the other year was Jordan-esque. Like, I watched Jordan as a kid growing yeah. up a lot, and watching him was, like, I'm going to put a clip over the top of this as we're talking um, during the show, but, uh, yeah, of that layup, that reverse layup, <laughs> and the comparison with the Jordan oh, one as well. So that was, yeah, that was godlike. Um, yeah, so how are your Nuggets going to go this year, mate? Well, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Jamal Murray is the big factor. So obviously you're talking about how far in the playoffs they'll go. In terms of seeding, he's probably not going to come back till just before the playoffs. So I can see them kind of getting... I don't think they'll be a playing team. I think they will sneak in... If we can get fourth, it'd be pretty good. If they get home ground advantage, they're pretty pretty good at home. Much better team. Although they've been pretty good on the road last couple of seasons. They've kind of gone away from being... Um, home only team because of obviously the mile high air and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. yeah the, the Nuggets have always had a reputation of being good at home, terrible on the road, but they're actually, they kind of turned that around a little bit. Um, I thought they improved a lot last year. It, yeah. The road wins don't seem to worry them as much. And I think that's because they're a very young team and they're starting to mature a little bit. Obviously Jamal Murray, um, like he's on a max deal now. He's not a rookie. Michael Porter Jr. had his first year kind of starting to learn. Um, he will be a big X factor this year. So obviously with Jamal Murray out, Michael Porter Jr. is going to get a lot more shots. Um, he's probably a sneaky good bet for most improved player, I reckon, because he's just going to be unleashed a little bit more. Whereas before he was that third option and um, kind of just told to, stand at the corner and shoot sort of thing. Um, I saw a stat the other day. He has the second best... Um, no, sorry, Jamal Murray was second best, but he was up there for, con for contested jump shots. He was, like, up there with... Seth Curry was on another level, and then, like, there was another few guys, and Michael Porter Jr. Um, and Jamal Murray were both in that. So he's just... He's six foot eleven, can shoot over anyone, just has a... Um, a filthy, clean-looking jump shot. It's just he's a hell of a player, and um, you hear a lot of trade rumors about the Nuggets trading him away. They're not giving him away. They're like he's he's a bit of a dope on defense at times, but he will um he will he will fix that hopefully. He, um, I think so. And he's just too good of a scorer to give up. They're going to have to pay him. What sucks about this year for us is in terms of the salary cap. It's Michael Porter Jr.'s last year on a rookie deal. So they're going to have to pay him next year. Um, yeah. So whether they can keep Aaron Gordon um, and a few other guys 
and then going to have to, I can see Michael Porter Jr. getting a max contract, but we're probably not going to be able to keep him without maxing him. So we'll have Jamal, Jokic, Jokic and Porter all on max deals. And if you're three max deals, you you basically fill in the rest in with um, veteran players. contracts and the role play. Yeah, it's just minimum minimum wage um, rookies or veterans sort of thing. So it sucks because this year was kind of the perfect year in terms of their window of being able to fill a few people around MPJ. Um, so whether going forward they can find good cheap players. They're not the Lakers, unfortunately. They don't have Hollywood down the road and um, the nice beaches and nice nice lifestyle. Although Colorado is beautiful. It's beautiful very place, underrated. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's very, very underrated. Beautiful place to, to travel, but it's just not a place that rich Americans want to live. Um, hence, yeah, we always get Europeans and that sort of thing because the top guys don't want to play in Denver. Unfortunately, um, so they all want to just jump on the Lakers or the Nets at the moment. So filling, getting fill-in role players um, is tougher for us. So that was that's why it's pretty good that we got uh, Jeff Green to come to us, which is yeah, pretty like a pretty good signing for us. Like that's for us to get a quality player on a cheap deal is um, a, a fair achievement. It's it's almost like our West Tigers, like we. <laughs> We, we kind of have to pay over this to get people um, to come to them. So, um, yeah, it depends on – to go the original question several minutes ago, um, I, I can see – I think we can make the conference finals. I can't see us winning the West because Jamal Murray might not have enough time to get back to his bubble – get back to bubble Murray. Um I think I think we've got the talent to push, and it all comes down to like the Phoenix Suns just had a perfect run. Not to take take credit away from them, but they just had like a perfect. The, the pieces kind of all fell around yeah. them. Like um, we mentioned, the Lakers last week. had the injuries. Yeah, the Nuggets lost Murray, obviously. Um, the who did they play? The Clippers lost Kawhi. Like it was yeah. literally like um, the perfect run for them. But they 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 do play very well as a team, the Suns, so not to take away, and Chris Paul led them pretty well, but in the regular season when we had Jamal, like we do, we went to overtime a couple of times, but when we had Jamal, like we, we really took it to them, so um, yeah, it, it's it's all down it's all down to Jamal and MPJ. Um, may, maybe it's a blessing in disguise, maybe MPJ getting off the leash a bit um, we'll make him get to the next level and then Jamal coming back and then Aaron Gordon playing. All Aaron Gordon has to do is go and get rebounds and um, fill in the, the defensive woes of MPJ pretty much. Yeah, he can just um, play that simpler role and yeah. MPJ can... Because he's... I think he's about to go on a tear. He's going to hit that next tier in my mind. Yeah. It's, it's the year yeah. for it. It's in his development. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how he goes. Yeah, he um, he's just a hell of a scorer. He's just he can create his own his own shots. Just, just because, like I said, he's just so big and so long and just shoots so well. So yeah, um, and he wants it. Yeah, uh, you down... remember in the uh, bubble last year, he made them comments at the press conference that like you know gonna have to mix this up. Like he wants it more than he's well, he's, yeah. he's confident in in his ability, and that's what you want from someone in your scorer. So. Yeah, he definitely likes to speak. He's got his, he's got his own podcast now, which is a little bit scary. Um, <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, he's it's talking. It's like uh, he's basically been his own little mini Joe Rogan, with, um, oh, I can imagine. interviewing people, talking of topics, and um, I haven't listened to it yet. But he's yeah, he's his mind. He's a, he's a weird cat. He's um he's a good soul, but he's a bit of a weird cat. So he's very very unique. Um, a, a big church and faith guy, although that's not very uncommon for um, American athletes. But yeah, um, yeah, all musicians are that. Stadium. All musicians yeah, ever. Yeah, um, I like to thank God first, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, are musicians like that? I feel, I feel like rock, 
like rock music some more. Into, oh, more rap music, you know what like I mean? It's like, more that's, at all them like MTV oh, awards. Right, like, yeah, sorry, yeah. First of all, I want to thank God. Without you, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a, it's a very African American um, culture. Yeah, that Pentecostal thing, church yeah, background and all um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty cool to go to a um, Southern American church where they'd oh, be an experience, wouldn't it? Stuff. I'd, yeah. Like, I don't want to go listen to some guy telling stories in a monotone voice. If you got, um, like, the big mummers out there oh, yeah. singing on clapping, I that'd be great fun. But um, get me to believe again. But, um, <laughs> yeah. What were we talking about? Basketball. Sorry. Yeah, that's Sorry, right, bro. Guys. I do this on my that's show, so good, too. Mate. Yeah, yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, what, what was the question again? No, just how... Yeah, no, you kind of answered related, it pretty well. Just, just how you're going to go. Anything okay. about Kevin, yeah. mate? Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, if we, it sucks because I had such high expectations for him this year. I didn't think I didn't think we'd win the West last year, but I thought we were like yeah. getting up there, like looking good for next year, and then literally one one bad landing by Jamal I'll, and just. I'll fucking yeah, a quick just question just to. Just to sort of summarize, I guess where you're at. If Jamal Murray's fit, you expect yourself to be beating either the Lakers or the Warriors. Like, do you think your conference finals? Like you, you sort of touched on that a bit earlier, but if we're looking at the top. You think you're top two, or do you think you're going to struggle to maybe get through one of them? I think we can take it to them. To be honest, like Clay, yeah. Tom- where's Clay Thompson at? Like, is he? Yeah, is I, he I going think he's to be, be right? I, yeah. I don't know where, whether he'll come back at 100, percent but I think yeah. he's going to be. He's going to be playing very early on in the season. I think he's ready to go for the start. So we sort yeah. of touched on that a bit, um, a bit last. Like I had Warriors at two, Nuggets at three. Um, but yeah, Lakers. Um, I mean, LeBron can't be. I might eat my words here, but he can't be good for it. Like as good as he is forever. I've probably said it for the last three years, but he has to. Yeah. He's not going to play seventy-two games. Anthony Davis can't stay healthy. Like. Their rosters full of pensioners, like it's, it's the oldest roster ever know, constructed I, I in can... NBA history. That, that's the beauty <laughs> yeah. of the postseason, though seven games at a time. Yeah, that's it. I mean, sports science teams will players are playing longer. Um, then it's the same in rugby league as well. Yeah. Look at Cam Smith, who played till he was 40, 40 ish, almost 40. Um, Sorry, I'm thinking of Tom Brady. Well, Tom Brady is another good example. He was he's only just retired. Um, and he's in his forties. So um no, maybe he's still going. He's still going still did going. he resign? Did he? Yeah, he's got one or two yeah, years in yeah. him. <laughs> he's enough. I think he's got one year left on his deal, but I don't know if he's announced yeah. that this is gonna be his last year even. So he's still going at forty. I thought he, I thought he re- I thought he retired. Okay. Oh no, no, no. He's, he's still so I guess going. been a being a quarterback's a little bit different. If you got a good yeah. offensive line, oh, yeah. and don't get smashed too much. Then, Especially with the rules, they're basically um, like, yeah, they're, yeah, they're endangered yeah. species over there. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> so. Like my, I'm a obviously Denver fan in football as well, and Peyton Manning, like, could barely couldn't run faster than like an eight year old kid by the end of his yeah. career. But he was just, um. Just got that brain. A lot of quarterback. It's more about the brain and the um. Yeah, they need the mobility yeah. so much. Yeah. yeah. So good on yeah, good on you, Brady. I'm happy for him in Tampa Bay. I didn't mind t- um him getting Tampa. I like to see teams that don't win much get wins. So um, yeah. So I don't want the boys. Lakers to win. I never want the Lakers to win anything. Um, like I was happy for Phoenix last year to get through. Happy for Milwaukee to win. Yeah. Um, obviously haven't won it in so long. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, w- I wish nothing but pain for the Los Angeles, for Los Angeles Lakers. Brendan, sorry. They like the, <laughs> no, no, uh, don't, don't be sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry. They like the you, Roosters. Guys, it's it's going to be, it's going to be tough viewing for you then this season. So, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> 2009. <laughs> 2000, I'm still scar, scar from 2009, and then obviously um, in the bubble as well. You knocked this out of the conference yeah. finals both of those yeah. years. So. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just feel like you're right. It's a, it's a set in seven game series. You can just put LeBron on ice. Um, Westbrook's probably a good player to kind of carry you through the regular exactly, season. Yeah. But yeah, he's 
I don't, I don't think you guys are going to finish higher in the standings than Utah. Um, or Phoenix. I can just say Utah. They're just a really good regular season team. Yeah. I can see, and they're just almost unbeatable at home. I can see them getting the I one seed. On that last week, yep. I think they're yeah. Gonna, yeah. Oh, I mean, we're going to go through it in a minute or two anyway. But um, yeah, they they fall more into my five to eight bracket. But I, I think you're right. Regular season, they could definitely be a top four seed. So oh yeah, definitely. There's yeah, just teams that are built like and and. To, to the Nuggets again. I mean, I, so I sort of think a couple of years ago that was the Nuggets situation. Very good regular season team. Um, but yeah, I think you're. Right. I think you're right. I think pending MPJ and Jamal Murray, they're ready to take the next step. So yeah, I think I think Lakers are going to. Depending on how the seeding goes, I think Lakers are going to occupy one seed, and then depending on where you fall on the bracket, it's going to be a coin flip between you and the Warriors in my eyes. So yeah, I don't think Lakers yeah. will get the one seed. I really and I really don't think they care. I don't think they'll oh, care enough. Yeah. To go for it, they don't need to. They don't need the one seed. Like yeah. it, it, it means nothing to come first. Like look, last year Utah came first. Was it Utah? Or Suns came first last year. Utah, I think. Utah, yeah. yeah. Look at Utah. Yeah. Like guess the playoffs. They they had a few injury um, injuries as well. But I don't think the Lakers will care enough to come first. Whereas Utah will. I think yeah. they'll just. Um, I think the Lakers will just kind of fluff their way through the regular season. Probably comes. They'll probably come third or fourth. Um, and then he hits the playoffs and everything resets. So I, I, mm. I don't, I don't think they'll get the one seat, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter exactly, in the yeah. NBA. I just think the, yeah. No, sorry, go. On. Um, I was just like compared to like rugby league, where it's like one game, you get one chance, like a seven game yeah. series. The Lakers just they, yeah, teams like them kind of know that as long as you make make the playoffs, you're a chance. So um, yeah. It'll all be about making sure they're they're healthy, and if they're healthy, even if they're hundred percent healthy, ready to go in the playoffs, I, I honestly think we can. My biased opinion, I think Jokic, um, like we in the bubble, we lost four four one to you guys, but um, if Anthony Davis, I know like basketball is all about making those shots, but if Anthony Davis yeah. doesn't make that game winner and um, Mason Plumley rotated on defense like he just kind of left Anthony Davis open to make that shot it puts just a little bit of pressure on him mate, misses that shot um, that was what that was game was it game three two. I think game two yeah it was one yeah, all so that was like, the go up 2-0 won yeah. game three from memory it was yeah, 2-0 so, two, one, and then 4-1 yeah. sliding doors moment we could have been up 2-1 on you guys it was literally one big one shot um, yeah and now we've added Aaron Gordon um who did the statistically doesn't look good, like he was good for us, but um, the five man lineup of Murray Barton, Gordon, MPJ, and Jokic had the greatest offensive rating in NBA history. Like, it was like, I think it was like five teams that were like it broke the record for because offensively, the NBA was just yeah. insane last year, yeah. but we were yeah. literally number one with that lineup like best offensive rating in the history of the NBA. And then it, I think it, I think we lost Murray like a week after, a week or two after the Gordon trade. And then like that, like we were just, literally, like, we were just high as like the Nuggets in Nuggets Nation, just like so pumped thinking how good is this team? Aaron Gordon's a perfect fit. Like we're flying high, like playoffs aren't far yeah. away. It's just look at that one moment. It's just... um. Yeah, just, I mentioned, just killed it for us. It's just Yeah, I mentioned last week yeah, that um, just after that trade, he's played the Clippers, and I've never seen a more complete performance by a team all year than what the Nuggets did to the Clippers in that game. It was next level. Yeah. Remember the yeah, game we're talking I was just talking cheese. And, uh, yeah. I think so. It was a while ago. It was in LA, wasn't it? Yeah, they yeah it went, was just after the was, trade. And you the, like again, you yeah. travelled down there and you just wiped the absolute floor with them. Murray was going off, Jokic was going off. He was, it was a national like, game from memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was on national TV because um, for whatever reason we always seem to shit the bed when we get national TV games. Like Christmas Day, we didn't get Christmas Day this year. I'm yeah, I was going to about to get to that. that. Yeah. We watched the cricket on. Yeah, we watched the cricket on Boxing Day anyway, but. We got the last two Christmases and we lost to the Pelicans and lost to, what was the other one? I can't remember. I tried to shut it out, but we just, for whatever reason, it's, I think it's one of those fan things that it's worse than you think. Like, yeah. Um, 
It's like ruin me day, and it's like of all days to ruin. <laughs> yeah, well, it was Boxing yeah. Day for us, but I don't think the players like would really want to play on Christmas anyway. So I'm, I'm, I was, I was angry because it was just like a little bit disrespectful to not put the the MVP on the biggest day, but I don't care that much. Yeah, that's a good segue, mm. actually. So, what do you think about the disrespect that Jokic is actually getting and has gotten throughout his career, but like even more so, I feel since he's got the MVP. Yeah, he's he's been disrespected pretty much from day dot. Obviously, when he came in, he was still playing off the bench. We still had uh, Nurkic was in front of him, um, and then as Nuggets fans, we have this point. It was December fifteen. Um, 2016 was like this, this game where Jokic got his first start and we kind of think of that as like a Jokic day because from then he literally just like went on a tear it was became his team and then year after year he just kept getting better and better and we thought oh and we just keep thinking he's like hit his peak because obviously he's not as athletic um, as most NBA stars like he's just he can barely jump over a phone book although he's starting, starting to get a bit of fitness now, but he just keeps getting better and better. And he won the MVP last year, and a lot of people were saying it was a default thing. And yes, like a few players around him. Um, obviously, there are injuries to a lot of a lot of star players last year. But man, he just he carried the fact that he carried the Nuggets when Jamal Murray went down. Like everyone wrote us off that we weren't going to win, and we still won like the majority of our games without our second best player. Like he just carried, like we had um, like just nobodies. Like we had, we had to get Austin Rivers in, like who had been sitting on the couch for six months, hadn't played. Like he was carrying these other guys to just like to victories. And just the, the, the argument for Jokic too, like he, he always gets compared to like Anthony Davis, even though Davis, doesn't like he's more of a power forward than a center, really. But yeah. um, they used to get compared to like um, Anthony Towns, and then he just kind of left Anthony Towns for dust. Like that doesn't even get he doesn't even get spoken in the same sentence anymore, which is good. Yeah. Um, like he just yeah he just makes players around him so much better. And there's not really I guess assist is a stat for that, but like the thing about the assist statistic is. It only goes if the player makes a shot. Like there were so many times that he'd he do a pass that's just insanely good, and the guy misses a shot and he doesn't yeah, get the assist, doesn't or he'll, the assist. he'll make, um, or he'll get like a hockey assist where he'll make an amazing pass and it's and it takes one more pass and they get to the basket. So there's a lot of like statistics don't show everything. His assist numbers are huge anyway, but they should be so much higher if you put elite shooters around him, which we lost in Jamal and now MP we've got MPJ, but um that was pretty much why we didn't beat the Suns, because guys just weren't making it wasn't anything on Yoki, it's just guys weren't making shots. Making and shots. Yeah. Unfortunately making making it yeah, making shots in basketball is pretty important. Pretty important. So <laughs> um it's literally how you get points. Yeah. So he's just yeah. if you surround it's around Jokic with shooters, he's He's just a player that just lifts the team. He just draws yeah. guys in. He'll draw in, and team. then when the shooters just, also draw away yeah. from him, it gives him more room and more space yeah. in the paint. It's yeah, it's double pronged attack. They're actually that's why I've got them as number one next year if they're all fit and healthy. I think they're a perfectly rounded team. Like they've built themselves to where yeah. they are now. They've brought young. They've got you know with Murray and uh, Porter Junior. And they Murray's hit his straps. Unfortunately, got injured, but you know. Their ACL tears aren't... They're not a write-off at all. Like, Zach Levine did his the other year, and look at him now. Like, he's still launching in the air and dunking. So, yeah, it's not a write-off at all. And it seems never as the Achilles anymore, ever, if you see the way KD came back last year, too. So, Yeah. Well, Jamal Murray, he put an Instagram story up the other day. He was doing... He did a standing dunk. Like, yeah, I saw that. Stand, sorry, not really. He did a standing, like, jump and chin-up on the bar... Yeah. He has no strapping on his knee. Like, part of me is like, oh my God, like, how good he's going to come back. Soon. And the other part's like, and then part of me, down. <laughs> the other part of me is like, what are you doing, man? Like, but obviously, like, he doesn't show how he got down. So hopefully, like, he landed on his good leg or, like, I don't know, but hopefully yeah. someone's knocking him down. But it was just like, 
He's like, watch this. It just does a stand. I'm like, dude, you just had an ACL injury. Like, I mean, the drug might be good. Hey, drug. I, I think personally, he might be back a bit sooner than than you think. In a sense of, I think you, you yeah. know, I mean, the, these athletes these days. I mean, we'll touch on them again. With we sort of ruled the Clippers out of our top four last last week because of we were sort of assuming Kawhi, but. I mean, these guys aren't taking 12 months anymore to recover. Like, they, they sort of come back in that eight to nine month range. So, I mean, just how late, how late did he do it again last season? Like, it was, it was before the playoffs. So it really wasn't that like late. It was just after the trade, play. wasn't it? It was yeah, just yeah, after I, the trade, wasn't Josh? Be back closer to the closer to the All Star week than um, than you think. Like, I, I don't think he would be back just in time for playoffs. I think he might get some games under his belt. So that that'll be a big so. factor. The thing, yeah. about, the thing about Jamal too is, is like a big criticism of him, like his stats don't look as good because he kind of goes into a bit of a lull through the season. I think he's very much a seven game. Like you saw him in the bubble when it's literally just go time. He just steps up like in the moment. He likes yeah. those moments. Whereas like in the middle of February when you're playing like Sacramento Kings or someone like pretty irrelevant, mm. he doesn't really like throw himself around as much, but I think he's very much like a, yeah, like a, a, a playoffs mentality guy. So if you can get him, yeah. if we can get him by March, like mid March, late March, and you give him a month just to get his rhythm back, um, yeah, he's he's a real gym rat too. Like he's a guy that work his arcs off to get back. So it's not like some yeah. NBA players who are just kind of there um, for the for the the women and the money sort of thing. He's just like a legit basketball. Yeah. Like, yeah. So wants to chip. So. Wants to work for it. Yeah. 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 So I think, yeah, if they, if, if you can get like three, four weeks pre playoffs, it's, uh, it's huge. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, entirely. Okay. Um, yeah, just one more thing I wanted to add to that. Uh, like, a bit selfish on my part, but yeah, I was just um, thinking about Jokic and how he was picked up. I chatted to you about it earlier before, about AK, who used to be at the club uh, over at, sorry, over at uh, the Nuggets. He was, I think he was in recruiting at least, and he was um, responsible for bringing Jokic over and discovering a lot of them Serbian players. And we just picked up, the Bulls just picked up Marko Simonovic last year, but we brought him over this year and He's played pretty well in the summer league. He's looked quite um, like, you know, baby Jokic in a sense. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, the Serbian basketball. It's it kind of sucked that they didn't um, make the Olympics. It was pretty. Can- Although Jokic pulled out of the Olympics anyway, so yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. But um, mm. the Serbian basketball, but they play basketball is completely even most Eastern European. Um, it's a really different style to NBA, like. You know that American kind of ego basketball, like the yeah. one-on-one street mentality, whereas um, the league's starting to shift. Like you got like your Luka Doncic and um, obviously Nicola, like just changing the game a little bit, just making it a bit more more fundamentals and um, the passing games and that sort of thing, rather than just guys yeah. that are just one like your Russell Westbrooks who used to run the game sort of thing, who are kind of just yeah. these dogs kind of dribble the air out of the ball for 16 seconds yeah 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 Yeah, i think the europeans coming in are gonna like take over in my mind um they've got the best base they've got the fundamentals there for it so they kind of slowly are at the moment it's just like it's only just realized how good of a nursery it is for developing talent yeah and aussies how good are the aussies like um he going to Oklahoma. Um, yeah, Jock just, Landale got picked you know, up by the Spurs. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, how good are the, the, the boomers in the Olympics? It was yeah, oh, the best. It was so good. It was so good. You know, Australian basketball. Basketball has just become huge in this country. Uh, I've I followed the Nuggets for 15 years now. So, yeah, when I was about 18, mm. I kind of got into them and over that time, I just feel like NBA is just like, I reckon the NBA is more popular in Australia than like, I reckon it's overtaken a league in terms of, yeah. especially for, um, I think you're a little bit younger than me, 
Brendan, but like from yeah. early 20s, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. 23. From your generation up to I'm 33, kind of mid 30s. So us Gen Y, Gen Z guys, like, yeah, it has to be up there for one of the most popular. Everyone talks basketball now. Like it's just in our in yeah. our in our age bracket. Um, I think as time goes on, more Aussies in the league. It's it's yeah, it's huge, and you get, we're getting more games on TV and league pass. Apparently, Australia has more league pass subscribers than any other country. So maybe because we don't get enough of it on our actual TV, but um, yeah, the games just, and it is pretty good time zone usually as well. Like yeah, for us. time games helps. Yeah, too. Uh, you get a couple of playoff games that are early on the East Coast. Like you might have to wake up at a three or four a.m., but it's usually you know like late morning type games for us. So. Yeah, yeah. matinee games, Sunday Arvo. Um, yeah. Sunday, yeah, Sunday afternoon games. You've got to get up a bit early. I, mm. I, I get up watch NFL Monday mornings as well. So, so yeah. Me much. Sometimes I, I kind of wish the, the basketball was a bit early so you could watch it before work. But, um, yeah. but yeah, mm. 100% getting – it's not like English Premier League where I don't, I don't follow soccer at all, but I feel sorry for people if you want to watch EPL because they play, what, Sunday Arvo, so you've got to get up at – Four, three, four in the morning on a yeah. Monday to watch it. You'd be so, lucky to get there's, there's there's usually one or two games a week where you get like nine thirty or a midnight. But yeah, they're usually the the majority of the slate of the games are at two a.m. So yeah. yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, too easy. Uh, that kind of wraps up that section of the show. Uh, if you can. What do you want to do now, Josh? Do you want to hang around and have a little bit of a chat about our prospects that we're going to go through or you got something else to do, mate? I'll hang around, I'll hang around and have more biased opinions. So I'm happy to. Oh, lovely, <laughs> lovely. Um, okay, boys. Okay, so continuing on. Uh, last week, as I mentioned before, we had a look at the Western Conference prospects for this year. Uh, like I said before, I've chosen the Nuggets, the Lakers, <clears throat> the Warriors, and the Suns as my top four prospects. And Brendan chose the Lakers, the Warriors. Sorry, I mean the Nuggets, the Lakers, the Warriors, and the Suns for me. And like, and Brendan chose the Lakers, the Warriors, the Nuggets, and the Suns. So this week we're going to have a look at the yep. five to eight, and also a little caveat because yep. we have the play on playing tournament still. We'll um. Yeah, have a bit of a guess at who's going to be in them bottom two positions for the play-in. So, uh, I'll yep. let you start off this week, mate. Yep, easy. So, I've got in... Do you want me to go from 10 down or maybe we'll go from 5 down to the play-in? Yeah, we'll go or? 5 down. Yeah, down to play-ins this time. Yeah. So, in at 5, and this is pending again injury. I touched on it a bit in the first segment, but assuming Kawhi, even if Kawhi doesn't come back, to be honest, I think, I think Clippers are in, are in my fifth slot. Um, I just, I look at the other teams that I've sort of got in this bracket and I'm just, I mean, outside of Luca, who I'll touch on in a bit, I just think Paul George really took a leap last year. Like he's going to step on the court and, and he's going to be the best player in a lot of, in a lot of those matchups if he was up against any of these teams that I'm about to list below him. So look, I think Ty Lue is a big, difference um he obviously showed last year that even without Kawhi and came back from 2-0 down on the on the jazz and then they put up a pretty decent fight against the Suns as well so yeah look I mean I'm, I'm not sure they, they they re-signed Reggie Jackson which I don't think many people saw coming um mm. they were able to get him in on the mid-level so I think that, that was a two-year 20 million dollar deal maybe but um wow yeah, I look, actually I didn't think, think they'd be able to keep the him. right steps yeah I didn't yeah, think they'd exactly. be able to keep him well, he, at all he, uh, I'm sure he could have commanded a lot more money elsewhere, but I think he sort of just looked at the Clippers as, you know what, they gave me my shot back. Like, I think a lot of people wrote him off as, you know, a starting caliber player in this league. Um, so, yeah, I think the Clippers took all the right jumps last year. So, I think they're going to cement themselves as, as as my fifth team. And to be honest, if Kawhi was healthy, I'd I'd put them in the conversation with the, with the Lakers, Warriors, Nuggets. So yeah, definitely. definitely. They're in at my five. Yep, I've got in. I was a bit torn between this one because, again, we sort of spoke about him in the regular season, but I'm, I'm going to go with Dallas just because I think, I mean, this, again, a, another team that really rides on their health. I mean, Luca can't seem to play 90% of the season and he's always got a niggle even when he's playing in the playoffs. Um, and we'll see what they can do with Porzingis, if they're going to try flip him, what they even can flip him for. 
but Luke is just he's leaps and bounds above these guys in the league. I mean, he is really cemented himself as a top five. I mean, we'd have to maybe make a list on another day, but he's really got to come in around that, that top five range of plays in the league. Um, so if he can get any sort of help, which Tim Hardaway provided last year, which I'm not sure if he can do again this year, but yeah, it's, it, a lot of it's going to depend on board singers, but like I sort of said with the Clippers, I mean, Luke is going to walk into most playoff series as, as the best player in that series. So yeah, Look, I'm going to put so a too. bit of faith on Dallas. He's, I, I think he's the favorite for the MVP as well, which I, I don't think they're going to get because I don't think they're going to win enough games. But look, in a playoff series, he's one of the last people you want to see. So, um, yeah, I've got Dallas in at my six. In at seven, I've got Utah, my regular season specialist. This is a team that could easily finish top two or three um, seeding wise. They're just they're so dominant at home and. Um, their defense is always top five with Gobert there, but I just think I touched on it a bit last week. They've they've sort of got a ceiling, um, you know, with Gobert there as the second best player. I mean, Donovan Mitchell, we, we know what he can do. He's pretty similar to like Jamal Murray as we touched on earlier. He lives for big moments. Like he's a guy in the playoffs that is just going to explode. Um, but I just think you look at the talent in the West, and I that's gonna they're going to struggle to probably get out of the first round. To be perfectly honest, they're really going to need to rely on home court. Um, and they're probably going to need to draw a favourable um, around one matchup. But, yeah, I just think talent-wise, they, they don't stack up with the likes of the Lakers, the Nuggets, um, you know, the Warriors and the Suns. So I've got them in at seven. And in at eight, I am one of my Smokies, one of my favourite teams that I love watching, the young Memphis Grizzlies. So I'm just I'm, – I'm banking on, again, Ja Morant to take a leap. They, their young core is just – it's, you know, it's, it's really promising. Dylan Brooks took a big jump last year. Um, I think they were, they were the eight seed with, with Jaron Jackson Jr. injured for a lot of it. So he's, he's going to play a big part in, in what they can do in his return to injury. And then I, I touched on him in the summer league, but a guy like Desmond Bain is coming off the bench. They, they just got a, a really good um, foundation. They sort of remind me of when the Nets, before they signed all their, their Kyries and, and Kevin Durant a couple of years ago, they just, they've got the formation of a, really strong organization so they did trade um, Valanciunas they, they got Rondo in that trade recently yeah and they so, traded Valanciunas as well yeah they they, they traded Valanciunas for Stephen Adams we'll see what that does to their team I'm not sure that's a big um, gap in in talent discrepancy like I mean, they're both pretty similar players but yeah they've added a veteran like Rondo so I mean look I, I think Memphis are, are going to be in, in the play-in and I've got them as my eighth team yep I only had them ahead of this ninth team in Portland just because I'm not sure on the Dame situation. I'm fairly certain he's going to stay. I don't see – we spoke about this last week as well. I don't see any suitors for him other than Philly. Um, But I think I can just trust Memphis a bit more than Portland. I don't know if they're going to flip CJ. Uh, They re-signed Norman Powell, which was good for them. They sort of needed that. But, I mean, Portland are just historically a a bad defense like they're they're always a bottom defensive team um the west is so deep that you know i'm not sure they have enough like dame is a superstar you know top 10 um player but he uh, he used a lot of juice last year to carry them and and they barely scraped in at six seed i think from memory i think they're in a three-way tie with the injured lakers and uh and dallas so i think they're going to struggle a lot more than people think as much as i know there's a lot of dame lovers out there and and you know he he's a top top notch player, but I think they're going to struggle. And then the the tenth seed, I think is a bit irrelevant. But I mean, I, I sort of had it down between the Pelicans, the Spurs, and the Kings, just because I'm going to rule out OKC, Houston, and the Timberwolves. But I'm just going to throw out a bit of a hot take and say that the Sacramento Kings maybe take a jump. They got a young core: um, De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Hield, Halle Burden, uh, Marvin Bagley, and my guy Davion Mitchell. So. Yeah, the, the 10th seed, it, it took a while for me to come up. with. I think the Pelicans probably have the best roster of the remaining teams, but I just think, you know, the Kings were only two wins out of it last year. And I I don't know, I just like what they're doing. They're another team that's young like Memphis, and I just think, you know, Halle Burden was a rookie last year. He'll take a jump. So, yeah, that sort of rounds out my Western Conference playoff picture. Okay, okay. Um, actually, quite yeah. similar to mine, a little bit, a little bit. There were some changes yeah. towards the back end there, yeah. but I also agreed with the Clippers. Um, 
Yeah, they got they signed Blad, uh, Bledslow, I believe, and they got rid of Rondo yep. and Beverly in that trade. So I think that's actually a really good trade for them. Um, we'll see how we go. Yeah, yep. my guy, Juancho Hernan Gomez, man. What's that, mate? He was part of that. What was that, sorry? Juancho Hernan Gomez is part of that trade. As, is he? As well, former Nugget. Jokic is oh, best. There you go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> just some lug, nugget love, oh, hey. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good egg, eh? Good egg. <laughs> um, I also had the Mavericks, number six. Um, you know, they haven't really done anything yet in this off-season. Like, you know, it all depends on, mm. you know, um, Paul Zingas and that. But there is a bit of noise that they might be trading for Larry Markinen, trying to get rid of Kleber, uh, swap Kleber for Markinen. That'd be an interesting mix for their team. Um, yeah, Markinen isn't fitting at the Bulls anymore. He's kind of trying to tank his own trade value as well, so it's a bit of an issue for us. But you might be able yeah. to get him on. They might be able to get him on the cheap. But you know, like you mentioned before and alluded to, any team that's got Luca on it, you need to look over your shoulder. They are a dark horse, and they will come at you like, like I mentioned before last week in the podcast. Like, oh, Josh, did you know how many people live in Slovenia? By the way, man. Um, I googled it in the Olympics. It's, um, I think it's two mil. Yeah, like sweet mil? FA. Yeah, like two million people, yeah. and they got all the way to the Olympics. And the depth of talent they've really got in their team for, you know, that many people is amazing in my mind. And um, like just alluding yeah, to what we were talking about with the Europeans before. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, like we said, any team that's got Luca on it, they're going to be dangerous. Um, also had the Jazz next. Um, they picked up Rudy Gay, so I don't know if that's going to be much of a help with them this year. But you know, like I said, like you mentioned before a few times, they're a great regular season team. But um, yeah, I think you know, as good as Goldberg was at the Olympics, they're like, in my mind, he's a bit of a liability when it gets to that back end of the season. Um, yeah. Okay, this is where it's getting a bit interesting. So. I do have the Blazers in at number eight, but that's interchangeable. Um, eight and nine with the Grizzlies. I think just yeah. because of Dame alone, they're going to be there. They, you know, they'll be in the in the mix for sure. But they've bought terribly. I, I can't believe what they've done. Like Dame's like, you've got to do something, and they've brought in Cody Zeller. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. dumbfounded by their moves. It's like they're actively trying to piss Dame off. So, yeah, it's yeah. Well, but that's sort of the thing with the Blazers. I mean, what? Just a disclaimer. I, I've one of my best mates is a big Blazers fan, so I'm not a, I'm not a huge Blazers lover. So that that probably I was with you. I sort of was flipping between Memphis, Portland, and I just sort of a bit on emotion as well. Put Memphis above them, but yeah, yeah. You know, he 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 sort of said the same. Like, oh, you know, we've got to upgrade for Dame. I don't know what assets they have. Like they traded a first rounder last year to get Covington. I think they, they paired that with a Reza to get Covington. Like that's the thing with Portland, a, a bit like Utah. I just think they have a ceiling. And and for as great as Dame is, I mean, he can't they, do they it by no himself. Defense. Like exactly. And 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 it's not even that. Like even if they're supposed to big three, I guess in in Dame and CJ and Power, like they could combine for ninety, and it still might not be enough just because. Yeah. They, they leak like 120 regularly. So, like, for them to do anything, they've just got to, you know, some of the, they, they got a couple young guys like Anthony Simons and uh, I forget who's the, is it Nasir Little? Like, like unless some of the young guys take some jump that no one has predicted, I, I just don't see it for them. So, I so think they, Portland, yeah. yeah. What's that, Josh? I think they're cool. I think Portland would rather blow it up. I think yeah, losing, that, that's losing thing, to like. Denver without Murray in the playoffs, like yeah. in six games, I think Dame Dame's had enough. He's denied it, but he's just been in Team USA camp. Wouldn't it surprise yeah. me if he's um asked around about like, hey, can you get me out of this shit sort of thing? That's but, thing but but I, th- I think I think they're ready to. Of... I reckon, yeah. yeah, I reckon they're but... they're they're just about ready to implode. No yeah, just, they don't have the cohesion as well. They seem just to be a lot of um yeah, a lot of you know internal rumblings that happen as well. I I, I just think they're on the verge of like just yeah. going to um yeah, basically just blowing it up, whether it's getting rid of CJ and just um 
for something, or I think Dame, yeah, keep CJ or and get Dame and just go for picks, go the OKC yeah. route. <sighs> exactly, that, and that's the thing. Like just to just to finish on Blake, I don't want to touch on Paul too long, but um, that's the. I think you said you mentioned it with the Team USA thing. I think Dame sort of has shot himself in the foot the last two years because he's, he's been saying every offseason, you know, I don't want to leave Portland this and that. And, okay. you know, I would never chase rings. And I just think he's, he might fear a bit the image it would it would leave him if he was to leave for like the Lakers. Not obviously the Lakers can't get it now, but, you know, like... Oh, it's they'd just, probably try. <laughs> they they, will. I'm, I'm sure they did. <laughs> yeah, like... like that's LeBron would be like, like, I'll trade yeah, all of you for Dame. Like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, and Crazy, that, you sort of mentioned, you know, do they flip CJ for something? Like, what can you flip him for? You know, like I don't think they can flip him for anything. Like they don't have draft, uh, they don't have draft capital, they don't have like movable contracts. So they got a lot of big contracts on there. Like similar to Utah, I think they just got a ceiling. And I'm with you. I think the only way they can improve is to actually just go to rebuild again. Obviously, it's not improving for the for the current day, but Dame's the most, like he's the valuable piece on that roster. Yeah. Think, you know, if you, if you could flip him, if you could haul Ben Simmons and a bunch of picks. And then flip CJ's and Norman Powers. I think that's your best route at, at getting back at something. Because I mean, that that's that's the thing. If, if you're not competing for it, I, I'm a bit more pessimistic in the sense that if you're not competing for a championship, you, you almost may as well just blow it up. Like, there's, there's no point being an eighth seed in the, in the NBA for for five years. You're not going to get any good draft picks, and yeah, you're, and you're not even competing for a championship. So you're literally stuck in limbo. Sort of stuff, hey. They have they've had one run. Yeah, yeah, they've had one run in the last five years. Like the, the year they beat us, the year they beat the Thunder, and I think they, they then got your Nuggets maybe in seven games, was it? And then you know they got yeah. swept by the Warriors without KD. Like they're just like they're not going to compete. I just think they have to blow it up. But you know, like I said, I've got a bit of emotion invested against Portland, so I might be a bit biased. Well, but, me yeah. too. They're our they're our biggest rival. Like like you said, they beat us. Yeah, they, they kicked us out of the playoffs two years ago. Yeah, we had the three overtime loss in that too like that's with, right yeah um and then this year obviously we kicked them out it seems to be a bit of it we've got the Nurkic Jokic um yeah, yeah like Nurkic like used to play so for us seen, uh, stormed out of a game yeah, at half time and went home like basically forced us to trade him that sort of thing so um yeah, yeah so they're they're kind of our rival so I'm a little bit biased against them as well but like yeah. you said if if you just stuck, although the Nuggets, we came ninth two years in a row. Like how freaking similar am I to? Oh my is. god! <laughs> um, and then, like we were kind of stuck in that limbo too. Like our highest draft pick is Jamal Murray at seventh. So we we haven't had a high draft pick since Melo uh, in two thousand three. So they're yeah, always yeah. kind of stuck in that. We were just lucky that we got Jokic, who kind of gave us you got the equivalent of so it. Portland, yep. Portland need a bit of a fluke. Call it a fluke, um, and that's what I'm saying. Unless they, they, need, they, need, they need assets, yeah, yeah. They didn't even have. I like. I don't even know if they had a pick this year in the first round. That's the thing. Unless one of their the previous first rounders in like Nasir Little or someone takes off, it's. I think it's pretty bleak days for Portland. I just think the later they leave, it's trade Dame, the less valuable he becomes. Like yeah. you know, the more he can sort of demand out, and the less years he's got left on his contract, it's going to be easier for him to force his way out. So, yeah. Sorry, yeah. didn't mean to interrupt your list there, but yeah, that's just no. Like you're right. No, it was entirely going to be yeah. my point that I was getting to. It's like the only assets they basically have left mm. are Dame and CJ, and CJ yeah. hasn't really that great of an asset in comparison to Dame. Um, I don't know if you guys see yeah. them trade machines. You can go online and do. Uh, when I heard yeah. that, <laughs> yeah. So I actually get on there a bit. And it's like, what can we actually do? You know what I mean? So. Especially the last couple of years yeah. with the Bulls, that was just diabolical. We've made some great moves this off season, but we'll get to that, you know, in the coming weeks. But um, yeah, yeah I had a look, and interesting, Josh, you mentioned um, Simmons for Dame. I actually, there was a three-way trade system I did where it was that would work. You know what I mean, like that. But Brendan mentioned that, I think. Oh yeah, Brendan mentioned it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. So yeah, I, I I see that getting blown up this year if it's not if anything nothing's done and. Maybe Dame isn't even there yeah. at the start of the year, and that just drops them out of contention altogether. Seeing how we go. Okay, so um, move really. Yeah, you're gonna blow it up, trade for Simmons, get uh, get some exactly. picks. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, next, I had I had the Grizzlies 
Yeah, so mm-hmm. Dra, um, Ja Morant last year came along again in leaps and bounds from his rookie year. Um, I think they've made some pretty good moves too. So, yeah, I tend to agree with that one. Um, my number 10. Is that what we're up to? Yep. So, yeah. I'm back and yeah, forth on this four. one. Um, I'm actually going to give the Rockets as my smoke here to get in at number 10. Ooh. Yes, so I know, I know. They're um so they picked up pretty well this off season with their draft picks, like Jalen Jalen Green or Jalen Brown, isn't it? Yeah. Jalen Brown, the young player they just no, picked up. Green. Yeah, Jalen Green, yeah. He's Yeah. Yeah, he's legit. <laughs> um and I like the little animosity yeah, and yeah. angst that him and Cade have got going at the moment. That's gonna be interesting for rookie of the year all year. Yeah. Um also they picked up Tice from the Bulls. So, yeah, mm-hmm. so Daniel Tice, I think he's going to be pretty handy. Christian Wood's back healthy. He came along in leaps and bounds last year. And, yeah, um, who's the point guard again? Former Washington. John Wall. Yeah. So how well he can manage that group and be a leader for him is probably going to be really essential. But um, there's some egos in yeah. there with that rookie and Wall. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. But... Yeah. I think that they have a chance of tying some games together and getting into that 10th spot for the play-in. So, a bit of a random one, but... It's going to have to be a big jump. No, no way. Yeah. No way? Okay, we'll see how we go. (laughs) They're not not into winning games this year. They'll be down the bottom of the West, I reckon. I reckon you guys are under Zion Williamson a little bit. I think the Pelicans... Well, he was just outside, yeah. So, and actually, I was... Well... Kind of, I was nearly going to put him up there because I thought the Valanciunas trade to um, the Pelicans is actually a really, really good move in my mind. So I think it's a better fit than what Stephen Adams was, and yeah. So I think the Pelicans yeah. they have to show something or they're going to lose Zion. So yeah, I definitely. think the Pelicans will go. I agree. At, at the end so of that's, the day, that's then... actually one of my um, that's one of my hot takes. Like I actually think Zion is is unhappy there, and I, I think he'll. Try actually for like you, it's very rare you see a top pick not stay the full eight years because obviously they are so eligible so much more money. But like I said, in my picks, I think they're the, I think they've got a better roster than than like Sacramento, who I picked, or Houston. But did they really get much better from last year? Like they lost Lonzo Ball. Not that I rate Eric Bledsoe very highly, but they lost Bledsoe. Um, and then yeah, they switched Adams for Valanciunas, but. I don't know if they got much better, the Pelicans, and they didn't make it last year. So, I mean, unless you're you're counting on the other teams to get a bit worse, I'm I'm not sure. Or yeah, unless Ingram or Zion make a big jump, but like Zion was pretty, he was a beast last year. Like he averaged twenty seven. He points. was. Ingram was, he was twenty seven and seven, and he only missed eleven games. I actually, thought, I I checked it up before, before we came on. I thought I thought he missed more games because when I was doing it, I was like, yeah, Pelicans have got to be my tenth seed. Um, you know, Zion was injured, but then I, I looked at the thing. He played 61 out of 72, so it'll be interesting. They also got Sadoransky and um, Temple in the Lonzo sign and trade. So, yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to be really handy balls. off the bench. Yeah. Sadoransky's a handy um, point guard. He really showed that, that in the um, Olympics as well. So, yeah. I can see Pelicans yeah. in the top eight, to be honest. So I think Zion's like, oh, well. he'll, he'll carry... I think he'll carry that as long as he stays healthy. And I think, yeah, you're underrating uh, Ingram a little bit. I think he was pretty good last year. This is you don't hear about him because he's on but, a, like a lesser known franchise. So yeah. I, I think the, the thing, like, way better, better than the Rockets. I think the Rockets are going to be. Yeah. Shit. I reckon the Rockets will get be shit house again. To be honest, sorry, I'm allowed to swear on your podcast. Go for it, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's sort of the thing. I mean, just, just before we move, I mean, I think they're going to be pretty relevant anyway, The ten, whoever the 10th team is. But, like, Zion and Ingram averaged, I think, 50 points combined last year. So, like, how much of a jump are you expecting them to make? Because, they, they, like, they were 31 wins last year. Like, I'm, I'm just not sure how much better they get. Like I said, I don't think their roster got much better. And I'm not sure how much room for improvement you're allowing with those guys, like. Yeah. Like, do you really think they have a bit another big leap in them? Like, I guess that's what I'm sort of asking. I think Zion does. I think Zion is so yeah. young, man. Zion, Zion's going to be a top ten player, I think, in the coming years. He's oh, 100. percent He's just going to yeah. he's going to carry that team, much like Ryan yeah. Harden did with the Rockets. So, although he had a lot of good shooters around him as well, like his last years for the Rockets, but 
Um, I agree. I yeah, think Zion I just think I can carry that team. Yeah, I just think when we like you know it, when we sort of make these lists, I sort of go down the list like it's for as good as Zion is. I mean, it's it's probably more playoff relevant when it when it's you know it's like best of seven, like regular season, anything can happen. But for as good as he is, like he's he's going to step on the court and not and you know basketball is it's so like the the top players dominate, like it's so top heavy dependent. Like if you don't have the best players on the court, usually you're going to lose. Like for as deep as your roster can be, and that's the thing. For as good as Zion is, like they're not. I don't think they have the best player when they play Portland. I mean, I think he's better than Ja Morant, but Ja Morant, like, he's, he's a very good player. Um, and then, like, Dallas up, like, he's not better than Luca. Is he better than Paul George? I don't know. Like, that's the thing. I just, I just think there's – I think the West is very – like, the East is a lot more top-heavy. But I just think yeah. – like, like, if he was in the East, I could see them them scraping in. But I just think in the West, I wouldn't underestimate just how deep some of these rosters are. Yeah. And the other thing, too, we've got to take into it. Yeah, the other thing to need to take into account there with the um, the Pelicans is it's their third coaching system in three years. Like, mm. yeah, who, who, you know, so that's a new thing to develop to um, develop around. So, yeah, that's why I've kind of left them out in my mind too. So, yeah, but I do yeah. See, take I that on board, that Josh. We didn't even mention, but yeah, like, so, like probably the, that's probably going to be the Spurs. They're going to surprise everyone. You can just sort of trust Popovich all the time. You know, it's probably going to be someone like that who you just just very reliable. But yeah, I just thought I'd throw a smoky out there in the Kings. But yeah, I certainly think the Pelicans have the best roster of those remaining teams, um, and they they definitely have the best player. But yeah, I don't know. I just don't see the Pelicans. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's mm. that. What do you think, Josh? Anything to add to that? Um. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Think of the teams that uh, that you've gone through. Um, so Rockets, Pelicans. I think you're underrating the Jazz a little bit. I think they'll be a little bit better in the playoffs this year. Um, yeah, there's too much, so much shooting. I don't rate Gobert that much, and they might start. They kind of start to hack him a little bit, do a hacker shack on him yeah. in the playoffs. But I think I think they'll be a little bit better this year. Um, Obviously, the the Clippers, um, yeah, that they, they don't scare me as much. But they used to terrify me as a Nuggets fan. The Clippers, I feel like they might regress a little bit. Obviously, Kawhi being out, um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. There's a lot of question marks around injuries, which sucks about the league at the moment. So yeah, um, yeah. But I think I think you said earlier, Brennan, that Luca. For MVP, I, I, my, I reckon he's a good. Would you call him? I don't think you call him Smokey, but I think no, well, that's the thing. I, I think he's the. I think he's, he's the favorite. Now. I think he's actually yeah. at five dollars. Oh, okay. um, he's not a Smokey then. But yeah, but that's the thing. I actually think that, and for as much as I love him, I, I actually think he might be a bit too short on the odds because I, I'm going through these teams that they might not even be like a top five seed. Like you said, I mean, I've, I've got Utah mm. below them, but I actually think Utah will win more games than them. So, Like he was favourite last year as well. A, so. again, a, yeah, he was the favourite last year. And, that's and the thing, same like, scenario you were talking five about. five seed last year. Yeah. The, the I'm MVP. just going to say that that was, the, that was the five seed last year and, I, and that was with the Lakers and the Warriors below them. Yeah. So I think the Lakers and the Warriors are going to jump them. And then... Of the teams that were above them, I don't know who drops below them. Like it was the Suns, the Jazz, the Nuggets, and the Clippers. So I don't know. I actually think the Smokey, he's he's that he's always the third favorite. I don't think he's a Smokey, but Steph's eight dollars fifty, and I think that would be my my pick. I think the Warriors are going to be a top three seed in the West, yeah. and I think Steph's going to have some. He'll be close to thirty points, seven ish assists. So yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think they'll. I don't think they've got enough around Steph. Like, yeah, he's good. He can put up 50, but have they got an, another 70 points? It depends, depends on Clay, I guess, if Clay is going to come back. Yeah. And yeah. that's basing. But a lot of, lot of, not a lot of depth in that side. Um, Draymond seems mm. to be getting on a little bit. So, yeah. So we talk about, we spoke you know, about last week. Could, could come out of the East. Yeah. We spoke last week about the speculation that Simmons, the um, front office of the Warriors, is actually mulling over the idea yeah, of, of trying to trade for Simmons. So that could be interesting. 
I heard someone yeah. joke that's why Draymond Green apparently went pretty ham on the Warriors when he interviewed yeah. Kevin Durant the other day. So that was he's, interesting. Because he knows yeah, he's we'll going to get traded. Because he knows he's going to get traded, and he's just pissed off. So we'll have to talk about that, I guess, on another time. Yeah, that was very interesting. He, I've so good. never seen a player currently still employed by their team talk about their general manager and, just and coach like jump that. on him like that. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll definitely chat about that next time. Um, come, yeah. So yeah. in the next couple of weeks, we've actually got a few sporting documentaries we might watch and review in the meantime. So while we're waiting for. Yeah. Uh, the NBA season to start. Okay. Um, next, did you want to have a little ch- bit of a chat as our summer league correspondent? Let us know how it went this week. Was there any big standouts that you saw just quickly? Um, uh, yeah, just to touch on that quickly. I mean, nothing that I didn't really mention last week. I guess I can just sort of narrow it down, I guess. I mean, the MVPs were Davion Mitchell and Cam Thomas, who I touched on briefly yeah. last week. But... Yeah, I mean, that just sort of touched on... I mean, Cam Thomas, for those who don't know, drafted late first round by the Nets. Um, look, he's obviously not going to have the ball in his hands. Um, as my, I don't even know how much game time he's going to get with, with their squad that they have. But, I mean, he'll be an interesting piece because he's on a contender. So it's always it's always interesting to see how rookies fare into contending teams because usually they like to flip them for veterans. Um, yep. So, yeah, I mean, him... I, I touched on Tyrese Maxey. I thought he was the best player at Summer League. And then, yeah, da- Davion Mitchell was was co-MVP, so I touched on him a bit last week. He's just a guy that's NBA ready, so uh, unfortunately he's, he's drafted into the Sacramento Kings, who I don't think are ready to win right now, but he's someone that I, I spoke about last week who the Warriors, I think, should have looked at. Um, so yeah, they, they were my three standouts, and yeah, two of them were, were named the co-MVP, so yeah, other than that, not much else to know other than Sacramento won it all, so. Yeah, yeah. they won it all. It doesn't really that's, use, that's mean much each year, but yeah, it just means that they've got the Better younger players, yeah. but yeah. So Doesn't it? I think it just showed though that I mean I know it's a bunch of rookies and second year players, but Devion Mitchell is a guy who's gonna come in ready to play right away. So that that's sort of the biggest takeout that I had from it. Yeah. Um the interesting thing yeah. it does show too to me is uh the depth of coaching talent in these teams, because a lot of the teams are coached by the assistants mm. and um yeah. Bulls actually had two different assistants doing coaching throughout the summer league and the one who was doing the second lot of coaching so the second part of it so the guy who they had there first is one of the top assistants and he bailed the second that Patrick Williams bailed he's like oh yeah I'm like yeah I'm only here basically to catch Patrick Williams and then this other guy came along and he turned them into an actual team playing over the last couple of games so that was really interesting to watch and um yeah it's showing who's got potential as a coach moving forward and who's kind of relying on their stars. We had yeah. Kenya Martin on our coaching staff, which was pretty cool to see, former Nugget mm. legend, yeah. which is, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's actually the um, the only team. Summer. What's up? Sorry, I just said our summer league team. Bones Highland looked good, our draft pick. Um, he was very good, yeah. yeah he he yeah, came yeah. really good in the end. I actually think he was too. Um, but we had... He had a lot of trash around him. Zeke Naji, who was our draft pick last year, didn't look very good. Um, uh, oh, well, Agata good from Nigeria. Last week. Sorry, yeah. Brennan. Oh, I was just saying, I was actually speaking on about it last week. Bowl Bowl looked the goods. I think we I touched on it a bit last week when we, we spoke about Denver for a couple of minutes. Fan, mate. I think not that not that Mason Plumley's a, an elite player, but I think when you lost him, you sort of lost like a backup center. You, I think you looked for McGee this year and I think if you let Bol Bol go this year, like if you, if you unleash him, he'll be a very handy contributor off the bench. So. No, he's not. He sucks, man. <laughs> he's just he doesn't suck. He's got a lot of talent. You're he's not just, a Bol Bol guy. I was at first because you just look at his. If you look at his highlight packages, he looks awesome. But if you watch an actual game with him, he just doesn't have a very good work ethic. Like he's just. Oh, wow. I think because he's got that like insane like he's seven foot three like just probably tore up kid like the other kids growing up he's just been put on a pedestal his whole life he's obviously his dad was a famous basketballer as well yeah he just doesn't see he need i think he needs a fresh start um somewhere wow, else. Like he's just on defense he's just a liability he's like he's yeah um he's just too bony like he's just gets out muscled by guys. He's seven foot three and still gets out round, rebounded by guys shorter than him sometimes. So he can he's got a good shoot good shooting and that sort of thing. But 
he um at the NBA level, he's yeah, I I've kind of given up hope on Bowl Bowl. I was hoping I, I like that people were talking him up. Um basically yeah. he's such like a, a phenomenon phenomenon that people talk about him and like you've obviously seen his highlights and that sort of thing. And I'm kind of keen for that because get his highlights up and put his trade value up. And if we can get a pick, I reckon yeah. I'll just lock him for a second round pick or something, to be honest. I don't think yeah. I'll be very surprised if he's on our roster. Um, well, I'm surprised he's just not in on him though, because yeah. like one of the, I just think one of Denver's biggest strong, like one of their strongest points is your coaching staff. Like I think your development, like you've done with Jokic, like you said, you haven't really had a high draft pick. Um, and you always seem to turn these guys into overachievers. Like always cheap people. And look, anytime you get a seven foot three thin guy, he's going to have limitations on the defensive end. Like he's going to be picked out in the pick and roll. And But I don't know. I, I, I always go back to that game in the bubble where like the Lakers had all their starters out. This is the year they won the championship. And Bol Bol did not look out of place. Where you guys basically, re- like you put out your bench yeah, I think you made like fifty something percent um, of the threes, and Kuzma, I don't know, I just think that's Kuzma the game up, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's. I don't know. I think he's um the the thing about our coaching is our coaching staff and our coach Mike Malone in particular don't like guys with bad attitudes, and that's why Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, they kind of humbled him a little bit in his first year. Like they didn't just unleash him. Like they just. Yeah. They they kind of try and bring everyone back down to kind of that um, team first mentality rather yep. than get a superstar here there and you, like that sort of thing. They're very very high. That's why they love um, Jamal Murray. He's like a gym rat. Jokic is obviously yeah. a basketball genius. Um, yeah, the Bones Highland apparently is just that's why they drafted him too. He's just like yeah. A hard worker. They like the hard workers. So Murray's Canadian yeah. too, oh, yeah. isn't he? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah we're, I we're think it makes a big difference. Team. Yeah, we've got um, obviously Jokic is Serbian, Murray's Canadian, Black Okancha is Slovenian. Um, we did have one show for a while there. It was like a, almost a United Nations team. We had quite a few, and that's because mm. they just can't sign the Amer- the American superstars. Like I said, don't don't want to go there, so they kind of. Um, yeah, get guys from around the world that are keen to play yeah. in cold weather. Looking like a better and better move to make these days, anyway, in my opinion, anyway. So, so that's that. Um, we just quickly do our tips for the week. So we're doing our NRL tips leading up into the back end of the year, Josh, and we just posted them online yeah. online last night. So. Before the game, this was obviously recorded before the first game of the round. Um, so I'll just quickly go through mine. I've backed the Storm, uh, the Seagulls and the Rabbitohs. Obviously the Tigers, uh, the Knights, the Eels, which pains me to pick them, but uh, the Roosters. And I've also gone the Broncos to get up this week. Because, um, yeah. yeah, I thought they were a bit unlucky last week to go down to the Roosters. So Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess my, my only games where I disagreed are the Panthers. I've got the Panthers over the Bunnies and I've got the Warriors over the Broncos but I can't fault either of your tips. They're going to be really close games. Um, I'd be curious to see how the Panthers and I think I just trust the Panthers a bit more. I, I saw a stat today. They've conceded like 11 points a game this whole season in a year where like we've had this whole Simbin thing and you know it seems like every team at least cops you know 20 or 30 a couple of times this year so Look, it wouldn't surprise me if the Bunnies win, but I don't like to be much of a fence sitter. So I'm going to just say I trust the Panthers more than the Bunnies. And, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with all the other ones. And the Warriors, I, I'm sort of with you. I actually think the Broncos is the logical pick, but the Warriors just seem to keep getting it done. Um, so I can't yeah. I can't fault them. They obviously upset our Tigers a couple of weeks ago. But, yeah, and I think I think Brisbane have a new halves pair. And I think they got on uh, Milford and Albert Kelly. I think Tyson Gamble's out. Not that I'm a big Tyson Gamble fan, but yeah, I just think, I, again, I trust the Warriors a bit more. So I guess that's the easiest way for me to put it. I'll sleep a lot easier if I tip the Warriors and get it wrong than if I tip the Broncos. So Okay, yeah, yeah I went with the Rabbitohs. I'm looking at it. I, po- I chose the Rabbitohs over the Panthers, um, particularly on form, recent form. So 
the Panthers mm. kind of hit a bit of a patch with them injuries. They're coming together now, obviously, since origin period. But the Rabbitohs have been um, the best team for the last eight weeks in the comp, if you have a look defensively and, and in offense. So they've scored more points than the Melbourne Storm. Um, they defended better than the Melbourne Storm. They're, yeah, In my mind, I think they're, they're ramping up right, where everyone else kind of gets to that point, plateaus a bit, and then, if you know what I mean, they don't really maintain that plateau as, lo- as well as... Like, Trent Robinson does it really well with the Roosters when they're fit, obviously. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's just the way I see it at the moment. I, I've literally... Yeah. I can't see the Rabbitohs losing this year at the moment. It's I know it's weird, but yeah, with the way that Melbourne's been and Penrith's been, but, yeah, when we get to that back end of the season, That's I the think Bennett's got them primed, I ready mean, to go. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you're right. They're, yeah, look, I'll I'll throw it to you in a, in a sec, Josh. But yeah, I think you're right. Like they're, like they're the form team um, for sure. But I'm just not going to discount the fact, like Penrith, just yeah. what they've lost like three times in the last two years, nearly. So, and one of them was to us in in that Origin round. So, yeah, for me, it's just a trust. I, I'm with you. actually. Like I look at the spine, I actually. think South have the better spine. Like the gap between Dylan Edwards and Latrell is, is big. I think the half is pretty even. And I think Cook is is maybe slightly better than than Coruscant. But yeah, but South's just like you're right, they're the form team, but they're just a bit soft. Like I'm just not sold on their middles. I don't know. I just think Penrith I think Penrith maybe have heard the noise that, you know, they're not the form team anymore. And you know, everyone's looking at Melbourne and Manly and South. So I just think I just think this is the Panthers are ready to go. They've been waiting for a big game. They haven't really had one since they beat the Eels, and that was even without Cleary. So, yeah, I, I think they're ready to go. I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna beat beat the Bunnies tonight. But yeah, I don't know. what I, are your thoughts, Josh? I think this the winner of this team will pretty much Melbourne's the runaway favourites. But whoever wins this is yeah. going to be the, the um. Well, Manly's up there too, but you never know of Tommy mm. Turbo's health. But it's pretty massive. Like the winner of this will probably be favorites for that second place this year yeah yeah no i agree i, I just like i said I, I think i just trust penrith a bit more they're a bit more stable and like i said i think the forwards are a bit different like that's the thing with south i mean not that panthers are a bad team at all but i think south is sort of more prone to an upset than penrith not that it really matters for this game because they're both heavyweights but yeah i just think south are a bit weaker they're a bit more fragile so Look, we'll, we'll see. I think it'll be a cracking game, though. But, yeah. Other than that, I actually think the, the rest of the week's pretty simple outside, maybe. I think I actually think Canberra could do some damage tonight against the, the Sea Eagles. I don't know what you guys think, but without Turbo, mm. um, they're sort of playing for their possible. season. I mean, I, my, I'm i sending a prayer up that the Eagles win for yeah. our Tigers' sake. Yeah, we need now. to. Yeah, we need to, yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm a bit worried that Canberra might get the job done tonight. But other than that, I think it's a pretty straightforward week. So... Yeah, yeah, just back to Penrith's form, I actually think that um, Dylan Edwards is a liability for the team. So at the start of the year, before he was, when he was injured and out, they had Crichton at fullback and they had Burton, I believe, in replacing him in the... And Momorowski. Yeah, and Momorowski. That yeah. was a way better fit. That team was unbeatable at that point, and I think they'd still be... Like, Edwards, he's got some clangers in him, mate, and I don't think he's mentally the player to be, to be at the back of the team. Like, they were mad getting rid of Laurie letting him go for Edwards. I know Edwards has got yeah. like more experience and he's like a bigger body. And But if you made me choose now, if I had like, you know, put my life on it, which player I think would be, you know, do a better job, I'd pick Laurie any day of the week. And that's no bias. And yeah. I, I literally think he's a better player. Yeah, so. I think, yeah. No, I agree, but I just, Dylan Edwards is actually, I, I don't know if I'd call him a lie, but I, I think he's a, he's a weakness in the team in the sense that yeah. I think that's, that's the piece that Penrith are missing compared to the other teams, but oh, he's got a brain snap in him too. That's reliable. where I think he's a bit of a liability. So, oh, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. yeah. He strikes me as actually just sort of the consistent guy. Like that, that's sort of why I prefer Dane Laurie because not that Dane Laurie's got an error in him, but I just think Dane Laurie's like got that X factor. He's got a bit more upside. I, I just think Dylan Edwards is just very stable. Like he can sort of know what you're going to get. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I don't see him really as the error ridden guy like I actually think he's he's pretty stable but yeah I mean in a league full of a bunch of kind of fullbacks I'm not sure he makes the top 10 so I mean that that's where I see him him as a as a weakness yeah but I I wouldn't say he's a liability like I don't think Dylan Edwards is gonna 
cost you a game with errors. But yeah, that's just my that's just my take. I could see a tight one in the back end, a m- massive clanger from Edwards bringing it all undone. That's yeah. So yeah. Not not to knock the bloke, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or anything like that. But no, sure, he's a lovely bloke. I'm not Penrith's biggest fan. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and the other one's yeah. Broncos. That's, That's the one tough. we didn't. Um, yeah, I I just think that. Yeah, I think they're going to get a, w- a win this weekend. Um, I don't yeah. know why. I think I've, I've got one mate. I've I've hated the Broncos forever, mate, since '88, since they came into the competition. But I've got one mate who's really struggled this year with all these Broncos. Last two years, massive Broncos fan. I'd like to see him get a win for him yeah. this year. So yeah, a bit more of a personal yeah. thing there than actual yeah. like, yeah, any analytics. So yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah, no, they've got the talent to beat to beat the Warriors this week, but I just I don't know. The, the Warriors just seem to keep plucking results out of out of their butt, to be honest. So again, I hope Brisbane win. Um, not that I think the Warriors can really do much. That, like, I don't think they can win all three of their remaining games. But again, they're tied with us, so I hope Brisbane win just to peel another team behind us. But yeah, I don't know. They they just like I said, they keep getting results done. I mean, that that win when they had Kane Evans. Yeah, Simbin twice. Who was that? Was that against the Sharks or who was yeah. that against? against yeah, it was the Sharks yeah, was because the Sharks. Um, yeah, it was the Will yeah. Chambers. Yeah, Will Chambers yeah. losing his nana. Yeah, like that was just ridiculous. Like they just seem to be a very resilient side. So I'll give the yeah. Warriors some credit there. Yeah, did they have someone else? That's why I picked them against them. I'm not too sure. I don't know. I can't um, remember. So we're all so. West Tigers fans here. There's no hiding that. Um, we let our biases out, yeah. but uh. Josh, you, I think, could be classed as the um, the expert on the panel tonight, uh, today. Um, how do you see us going for the rest of the year, mate? Um, I think we'll beat the Sharkies. I think I don't think I think it's very very unlikely that we make the semis. I think we've all got this hope, but it's yeah, we're not going to beat the Panthers. That's that's the thing. We're not going to even if we win all three. We still kind of need results to go our way, which the teams play against each other. Um, yeah. If we, we beat the Sharks tomorrow, which I think we can, I won't yeah. say we will, I think we can, um, then our hype's going to get pretty big for the, and the next week's game is going to be huge, us versus Panthers. Um, I just can't see us getting past the Panthers and it's just not going to be enough. And as Brennan's dad said on the show, a thousand times just that Warriors and Brendan mentioned earlier on the show losing to the Warriors just five times it's just at the end of the <laughs> season, so if we beat the Warriors if, if, if we had that extra two points and beat the Warriors um, I'd say I'd be pretty confident we'd make it but yeah I think we're going to be going to win sh- we're going to be a win short which is always the case with us yeah, yeah I agree I mean I've we've sort of spoken about it on on the West Life pod, but yeah, I mean, I sort of gave dad hope because when we went into that Penrith game, I actually said if we just win one out of four, that was when we had the Para, Penrith, Melbourne, uh, South stretch. Mm. I said, we just got to win five out of our last seven. And I actually said, I think we'll be favoured in five of our seven because we played the Broncos who we beat. I counted a loss to the Eagles. And then I said, we'll beat the Warriors, the Sharks, we, get we played the Bulldogs twice. And then, yeah, we lose to Penrith. So... I think you're right. I think it's I think it's actually sort of going to go how I how I panned out. I, I disagree in the sense of I do think if we win all three, we are going to make the eight. Um, like I just think I, I've sort of looked at the draw and I just think the way everyone sort of plays each other and how it's going to pan out. I think 24 is going to be the the mark for us. Um, so yeah, we we need a miracle against Penrith, but like you said, that that Warriors game is just going to kill us. Um, Four against sucks. But, you know, that that's the story every year. There's always that game that. That is going to kill us, and and we always seem to lose against those teams. So yeah, and like you said, Rob, we, we lost to the Warriors twice this this year. That we should have beat them. So we yeah. should have beat them both times. Yeah, the last game of the round uh, of the of the season kind of uh, it reminds me of when we lost to um, Newcastle a few years ago. Like if we get in and we're like going to be on in there on points. Like I'm not saying we're going to get beaten by Canterbury, but I could see us putting in a really really ordinary performance. And even if we're there on points missing out on for and against. Um, I don't know if you're, you probably yeah. remember, Josh, you remember that um, when Sheenzy actually gave S- L- Robbie Farrow a bit of a spray in the post-match press conference, a bit of a dig for um, trying to get, um, trying to win the Daily M instead of trying to get the team into the semi-finals. 
last game of the no, year. No, yeah, it was um, yeah, against no, Newcastle. No. They were like struggling down the bottom of the comp, and all we had to do was beat them, like win the game. We missed out on the. We got we came ninth that year, but we finished on level points with eighth, and we missed out by two points on for and against of getting in. So, yeah, it was something like that anyway. Really, really yeah. close. So, it's got that kind yeah, of right. same feel to it well, for me. Yeah. So. Okay. That would, that would be the most West Tigers thing. Oh, wouldn't I mean, it? If yeah. We beat, if we beat Cronulla <laughs> and Penrith and then somehow butcher it against the Dogs, that that that'd be very West Tigers. You know, that'd be so West Tigers. It would. Yeah. Like I'm. I think every West Tigers fan, assuming we beat the Sharks anyway, we've got to get through them this week. Um, but even if we beat Penrith, no Tigers fan should feel safe about round 25. <laughs> no. If there's one thing you've learned, um, that is the game we are definitely prone to losing. So Win five in a row and then lose the worst team in the next decade. Yeah. It's, and it would just be so difficult because we'd be the last, we're the last game of the season. Like we'd know that the fate is in our hands and we would still butcher it. Oh, but, yeah. Just wouldn't surprise me. And then uh, um, Dylan Napa kicks a field goal. <laughs> something like that, yeah. And yeah, something diabolical. Yeah. As well from us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. Yeah. Probably a field goal off the cross. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay, that wraps us up for the week. Okay, thanks for joining the show this week, Josh. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for having um, me, guys. Loved it. Not a problem, mate. And also, cheers again, Brandon. Um, we'll see how we go with our no, tips. Of course. And um, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see you again next week, where we'll probably um, break down the Western Conference, go with our top four there. Oh, sorry, the Eastern Conference. We did the West this last two East. weeks. Yeah. Uh, doing the East next week. Yep. Top four, and yeah, we'll see what else comes up through the week. So, thanks again, guys, that's and it. I'll see you later. Alrighty. No worries. Thanks, Catch guys. You then.